According to Birago Diop, a Senegalese poet, if we tell gently, gently, all that we shall one day have to tell, we will hear our voices with our laughter. You probably have heard of four seasons of loneliness. Ours is a four season of corruption. Magu FC and Malami FC have locked horns in a fierce battle of revelation of who is more corrupt. Akwabu strikers and Nunia slappers are there thrilling their fans to a marketplace nakedness of Cambridge slap, Osford husband. Yet, we the spectators have been distracted from the weighty matters of monies meant for the development of Niger Delta, which have found their way into private pockets. How about the allegations of corrupt enrichment and financial impropriety levied against Abubakar Malemi, Malemi, the Attorney General of the Federation? Are they also just going to end up in the realm of social media? Remember, ICPC recovers and manages asset too. When are we going to look into their books? And the only answer I get from all of this is that if you Malemi me, I will magu you. If you say I help myself to recover loot, I will say you awarded oil contract to someone standing trial for air theft. If you sack me for insubordination, I will say you bought an expensive house for your son and threw a lavish wedding party for him. But in Port Harcourt babes, or Port Harcourt boys, Don Kramantis you should be collecting royalty for use of his rhyme. If you anang me, I will guni you. If you akpabio me, I will nunia you. If you try to entangle me, I will slap you. And if you say I stole, I will say you married for husband. And if you say I don't have NYC certificate, I will tell how your girlfriends are the ones supplying diesel to NDDC. If you say I was sad for insubordination, I will report all that you stole. Well, looking at the two people involved here, they look good together as I see love in their eyes. So what corruption in NDDC has brought together, let no probe put asunder. I hear land they're ever looking for her to arrest now. Yet, this is supposed to be the interim management committee that is to forensically audit the NDDC according to the uncommon transformator who receive uncommon slap from a common MD who is insubordinate. Is President Buari aware of all of these happenings? He's never aware. Anyway, let's wait until Attorney General of the Federation, Malemi, maybe write him another memo. Or is the government just a shared joke or just a, a usual script from old drama? How many of us remember Honorable Hembe and uh, Maru Maote, like my bon Foli, Fol, uh, Yori Folare would say, the season of absurdity not be today. I would therefore advocate that as government is auditing the FCC, the terms of reference of Justice Zayo Salami's panel should also be expanded to cover ICPC as an anti-graft agency responsible for recovering public funds too. They should sh also show us their books to ensure that recovered loot are not relooted. And as Magu is suspended, the Attorney General of the Federation should also be asked to step aside for thorough investigation into the activities of his office against those weighty allegations of corruption and financial impropriety. Lastly, Akpabio and his interim management committee should also be suspended, a board properly con constituted, and an independent forensic auditor appointed to clinically audit the commission and whoever found culpable shown the way to jail. That way, the president would have shown that there is indeed a new vigor in the fight against corruption. But well, I have my doubts. I bet clear rules for Jaga Jaga. See, I hear the smell. Don't be Nigeria with it. So all this fine, beautiful thing where you say make we still clear road. <laughs> because I told you I have my doubts. Mm -hmm. um, you know, look, I've had my experience in, in, in government. I've been burned. Mm -hmm. But I, I think that, you know, there is, there is um, the whole system, the whole system um, from the top, there needs to be, uh, how should I put it? Restructuring. Uh, restructuring. <laughs> uh, and, you know, it's, it's mind-boggling. You know, when I was watching TV and listening to accusations and counter-accusations of all kinds of figures being peddled around. But I think the whole thing for me is really the fact that um, there needs to be, as to borrow um, Liberos's, um, uh, there needs to be a lot more vigor and transparency into even how the agencies that are responsible for transparency and fighting corruption, how they, how they operate. And it goes back to, I think, the fundamental thing is not respecting the rule of law. Okay. Because when people, and I mean, and this is the funny thing where, um, when people were saying that, look, even Magu himself, the way he was detained, 
did not follow due process. Okay. And 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 the way that they're acting, the, the even the the terms of reference are not known. If the way we are fighting this corruption is not transparent, then that's that's in itself is corruption. Yeah. 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 Look at how the FBI conducted raids. Um, they took their time. They were diligent. And when they did, when you read the the charge sheet, the FBI, you will see the. Me the uh, Michael, do you know why? Quick, quickly, because there is another body that will review the step taken in those okay. raids. Okay, interesting. There is always, you know, a monitor and enforcement body. So you're accountable to someone you're else. You're accountable to someone else. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I will take it from the point of view yeah. of systems again, because, you know, I look at it and I'm thinking, well, I agree. First of all, I agree with his recommendations that, you know, the ICPC too, let's, let's wait for them to be scrutinized because it won't come full circle until all the relevant bodies are scrutinized. But I was looking at the systems and I was saying to myself, like he was saying, the logic, you know, if we put in the right systems, even the wrong people will be sifted out. Yeah. But I was listening to someone recently who works in the private sector, and if you see how carefully they're minting their system so that when they go to get contractors, you will, if you don't get the, make the cut, you're the wrong person. So my, then that took me back to thinking, the reason we have this problem is that we're trying to get out the wrong people, and it's more costly getting out the wrong people. It's easier to get the, when you get the right people who will then do the right things. Mm -hmm. And then I say to myself, why is it that the wrong people are systematically the ones at the heads of these organizations? Then I thought, and I may be wrong, so correct me, it has to do with our costly election process. You know, so if you go into, if you, if you have thugs and people who have the money in abundance, not many people are dangote, and they fund you, they want their payback. And the way of paying them back is to give them all these appointments. So you get a lot of people who are there, not because of merit or because they're the right people, the, th the technocrats we're waiting for, but because they're owed something. They've paid for your election, they want their payback. And so you have a lot of these you know, godfathers you know, putting in their people, no. I'm wrong? Okay, so yeah. if we make, so if, if, I'm, if I was right, I'll say, if we get the election process, make it less um, uh, money oriented, mm -hmm. then when you come in, you don't have the baggage of having to pay people back and you're shackled to them and you're almost like a stooge and, you know, the wife of president is saying, you know, the, the people around him are not even the people they started off with. That's my thinking, I may be wrong. And Neka was appointed, not because he was a politician. Uh, occasionally. There are people, but if you set out to appoint technocrats, you will get them. Mm. But sometimes some people don't just set out so because they don't want those who are brighter than them. Yeah. So but how do the wrong people for... get in there? I'm still also... Yeah, that's why I said yeah. to some extent yeah. you're right. Uh, Aisha? Um, uh, okay, uh, yeah, so, so, to some extent, of course, you're right in the sense that in Nigeria generally, uh, we reward bad behavior and we punish people for doing the right thing. Yeah. And so it's, it's a culture that has, you know, systematically, it's everywhere. You have to ah, be is this not Nigeria? You to you sabi do what is it? Behave the Nigeria. So we sort of like accepted that and, and, and it's really uh, affecting us. But let me take it from where uh, uh, my brother ended when he talked about the fact that uh, make we make we clear road for Jaga Jaga, they hear this smell. The thing we say we don't clear road, so they're not there for you. <laughs> that we always clear this road. So time don't reach where we go sit down for that road. Maybe we we will stay there turn that for there. And I think the biggest restructuring that needs to be done is that you. of citizens. Those people you. are having a ball. They are having the fun of their life. They are enjoying themselves. They do all of this drama every time. We've seen it over and over again. So it's you. not the fight against corruption or for corruption or whatever. It's just boys fighting their big boys fighting their big fight. Yes. And then we, we are spectators. We are there. That means if we are fight. Our yes. mumu don't suppose do. That That's MU, true. UMU, Ju, where they, they, we know the mumu. It's time for us to get our ass together. And I think that restructuring has to come from the angle of the citizens understanding the effect of governance on their lives. The biggest problem we have in Nigeria is the fact that people can go to other people and have their needs, needs met. Yeah. So what's the essence of making demands on government where you can go to your that. neighbor? If you look at this NDD speaking and look at the fact that See the number of students that are suffering abroad, that have been crying out for over two years, that are being treated inhumanely because of the fact that their state, their government refused to pay their fees. And then you, you see the whole of this corruption thing going on. You, you almost want to puke. But we have a citizen who, who are unconcerned about what is going on. They just want to see. And you know the thing that we are very good at, we abdicate our responsibilities to God. We always fight for God and leave our fight to God. Or you so fight the binary war of, of us against from, them. Yeah, become active citizens and make the man. We don't do that. I do <laughs> with what Aisha said. The only thing I would add to what she said is that in addition to the citizens themselves becoming aware of their place in Nigeria and their place in the world, from an economic point of view, which is where I tend to specialize in, I think, first of all, the citizens and generally the structure of the country itself needs to open up in a way that 
government becomes presently the government is the wealthiest entity in Nigeria. Yeah. Which is wrong. It yeah. shouldn't mm -hmm. be. Yeah. So yeah. if you want to become extremely wealthy in Nigeria, just join you government. go into government. Government is the biggest oh, so if you want to, sponsor government. Yeah, if mm -hmm. you want to become extremely wealthy in the US or in Brazil, you go into private enterprise. Yes. You have begun to hear our thoughts. Now it's time to listen to yours. And um, spiritual solution to Nigeria's quandary. That's uh, Seidu's advocacy. Fatum 2K10 has a lot to say. The late great Yoruba philosopher, Madame Sophie Oluwole, brought a lot of clarity and objective information in regards to everything surrounding the Yoruba philosophy. The Orisha, that have been wrongly and falsely claimed to be worshipped by the Yoruba people, are not gods, but powerful leaders that were distant from the people because of their contribution and development they brought. Objectively speaking, Olodumare is the one true power and supreme intelligence worshipped and acknowledged by the Yoruba people. Then you have his agents or messengers known as the Orishas, Oshun, and the rest of the Yoruba Orishas weren't supposed to be worshipped like the creator Olodumare, but rather acknowledged and greatly respected for what they did. Before the British invaded our land and introduced Christianity in the 19th century, where our people were our people not spiritual? Were we not sophisticated and intelligent people? Did we not have our own system in place? Why is it that once Christianity was introduced and adopted, our spiritual system and philosophy was considered evil? Hmm, phantom, it's like you took time to look into the matter. Thanks for enlightening us, and um, I'm in perfect simulacrum with you also. On Aluta Continua, Dele Dosumu says, Magu Saga is a distraction. Nigeria won't benefit from whatever the outcome is. We need to focus on how we can wake Nigeria up to demand equity and justice system. What we have on ground right now is a shamble, an insult to the Nigerians' intelligence. We need to sensitize the consciousness of every Nigeria. Until then, we have a long way to go. Thanks, Dele. Many would agree with you, and this is why we keep advocating for a better society. Advocate with us on our social media platform on Facebook, Plus TV Africa, hashtag the Advocate NG, and on Twitter and Instagram, at Plus TV Africa, hashtag the Advocate NG. And to catch up with previous broadcasts, simply go to plustvafrica.com forward slash the Advocate. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Plus TV Africa. Up next, fresh and not frustrated, it's Aisha Yusufu with another question. My sister, big up, continue. Five panelists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed, it's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. Well, well, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. That's it, really it does, it does. It does. I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just colonize you. 